Who replaces Harold Perkins? Brian Kelly discussed it on Monday. We'll react to what he had to say. It's Locked on LSU. Let's go. You are Locked on LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, let's get it. It is Locked on LSU, your team every day. I'm your host, Matt Moscona. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. We're free, available wherever you get podcasts, of course, on YouTube as well. So please subscribe on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube, smash that like button, hit the bell so you're notified whenever we post a new video. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. A Monday night thriller, Jaden versus Joe for the first time in the NFL. Can't believe one of the reasons I'm recording this late tonight is because I was up watching Monday Night Football and it was so worth it. Uh, we'll delve into the first, what we hope is many matchups between the two LSU Heisman Trophy winners. What is the worst position group on LSU's defense? Gave you a hint if you were here for yesterday, but I got the sequel and a little more to add to it. But Brian Kelly met with reporters on Monday as he uh, does customarily every Monday of a game week. And it was a recap of the UCLA win, a preview of South Alabama. And obviously, Brian Kelly began his press conference with the sobering news that we all knew and heard reported on Sunday evening and and, and feared on Saturday if you were here with us after the game as well. But uh, Brian Kelly confirmed a torn ACL for Harold Harold Perkins. Certainly an injury that, um, you know, we feel terrible about, especially for Harold and um, you know, the work that he's done to put himself in a great position. Um, you know, look, you, you lose players all the time. You, you just feel terrible for them individually because of all the work and, and time they put in. We'll, we'll have somebody else step up um, like we've had this year, right? Uh, we lose um, Jacobian, and, um, you know, that was a tough loss for us, uh, but... A true freshman, Ahmad Bro, comes in, does a great job for us the last three weeks, and um, plays great football for us. You know, we lose John Emery, um, and another true freshman comes in, and Kay Durham, does a great job for us. And um, similarly, we'll, we'll have somebody step in here as well, um, and uh, the next man in will we'll come in and... Um, rally and, and, and put us in a position where, um, you know, we have success as well. So these are difficult, but uh, we've got really good players that have come in and step in and um, fill in for LSU and um, move forward. Uh, I did ask Brian Kelly specifically who. Um, who replaces Harold Perkins? And one of the names he mentioned that was so interesting to me, and it was interesting because of how he finished that fight, and that was his open. So that was that was his prepared statement as he started his press conference. But he mentioned Jacoby and Guillory being replaced by a true freshman in Ahmad Bro. He mentioned John Emery going down and being replaced with a true freshman in Caden Durham. Now, not necessarily a one for one there, but. Uh, the person who was asked to step up and take reps. Like we've obviously seen more defensive tackle of JVR Suggs and Sean Washington, guys who have stepped up, but Ahmad Bros taking reps he otherwise would not have taken. So the same is going to be true at linebacker. And some of the names we know, the Weeks brothers, we know obviously um, that Greg Penn is going to be there as well. But there was a freshman that Brian Kelly mentioned who might be the next up on the defensive side of the ball. If Look, if we want to play with three linebackers on the field, um, the first guy that would move out there would be Whit Weeks. He would play that Sam linebacker position. Uh, Greg would move to the Mike um, linebacker. and Excuse me, West Weeks would move to the Mike linebacker, and Greg Penn would play the Will. So if we wanted to be in Buffalo, we feel like we're still in a really good position. We would probably activate um, Xavier Atkins as the next Will in that kind of situation. So... That's where we would be if we wanted to stay in the configuration that we were currently in last weekend. Um, We would probably look at also going back into a star position with Major Burns playing the star, backed up by Kylan Jackson. Uh, That would be the other 
kind of um, look that we would have. So we have the versatility to uh, be in either one of those uh, defensive structures. The name he mentioned, Xavier Atkins. Now, I'm not telling you Xavier Atkins is going to be starting before this season is over. But that's the next name that steps up. Remember, when you lose a starter, your depth gets tested. It's not necessarily that you don't have someone that can step up and be a starter and be a, a competent one. I'm not saying you have another Harold Perkins because you don't. But you can make do with what Brian Kelly just said there. You can move Whit Weeks to the Will. You can move West Weeks to the Sam and Greg Penn can or to the Will and Greg Penn. Or excuse me, West Weeks can play the Mike and Greg Penn can play the Sam. But did you hear what he said? Last week, Harold Perkins was playing the Will. Next up out there would be Xavier Atkins, the true freshman. If you're not familiar with Xavier Atkins, he was a four-star originally from Jonesboro, Louisiana. He moved to Houston in early 2023. He was the number 26 linebacker prospect in the country, the number 49 overall prospect in the state of Texas. He was a top 10 linebacker in the country by rivals. He's currently listed at six foot, 210 pounds which is about the same size Harold Perkins was as a freshman. I'm not sitting here telling you he's going to have a freshman season like Harold Perkins or anything of the sort. What I'm telling you is if they're looking for who's next and you keep looking for who's next at all these spots and they keep turning to freshmen, it's something I've pretty consistently said here and on all of my platforms. It is so abundantly clear what this coaches that coaching staff is doing. They are looking at their talented freshmen and saying, you know what? If our veteran guys who have been in school for three and four and five years aren't getting it done consistently, let's look at the young guys who have the higher ceiling and get them experience, take our lumps, and get them ready to play. You're seeing it all over the secondary. You're seeing it at all levels of the defense. And I think you're going to see it with Xavier Atkins next. I'm not predicting, to be clear, I'm not sitting here and predicting that Xavier Atkins is going to go play 60 snaps on Saturday against South Alabama. What I'm telling you is if you – Need another body to the rotation. That's the next guy worth keeping an eye on. Xavier Atkins wearing number 30. So maybe someone worth keeping an eye on Saturday when LSU please play South Alabama to see if he gets out there and uh, and plays significant snaps or defense, first defensive snaps for LSU. Um, there's a couple of more things that I want to touch on that Brian Kelly had to say. In particular, uh, what you lose uh, with Harold Perkins out. And there was actually a very interesting parallel to former LSU defensive coordinator Dave Aranda and something he said back in 2017. I'll connect those dots when we continue. It's Locked on LSU, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Five Hour Energy. It's my pleasure to tell you about Five Hour Energy. Look, if you are struggling to get through your day, uh, I've been there. Uh, I do a radio show three hours every single day. <laughs> Uh, and I start at three o'clock, uh, three to three o'clock PM when many people are maybe coasting to the end of their day is when I need to ramp up and five hour energy is a product that I've leaned on for a lot of years. I'll pop a five hour energy right before I go on air. And maybe the best part of that for me with, with five hour energy is it gives me intent focus to get through three hours, to elevate my energy and get through it. Maybe for you, it's to tackle a to-do list. Maybe it's before you go work out, you want to get in shape, but you're having trouble staying motivated. Take a five-hour energy shot. Make that part of your lifestyle. Get that energy boost you need to get fit. Maybe you need to get through a full day of watching sports, or you just need to get in the zone, get that feeling of alertness and energy to get you in the zone. You can do it with five-hour energy. Zero sugar. It's convenient. It's a portable size. It's a perfect pick-me-up for getting stuff done. Tons of flavors as well. Find yours. My personal favorite is the um, uh, is grape. So uh, find yours today. Tropical Burst berry, watermelon. Try them all if you want. As a matter of fact, when you go to the website, you can mix and match a box with whatever flavors that you want. And we got a great deal for you. Go to 5hourenergy.com. That's the number five. That's 5hourenergy.com. And get some 5-Hour Energy product today. You can use my promo code, Locked On CFB to receive 20% off your order. This offer is only valid until September the 30th on one order and cannot be used with other promotions. The code is not good on subscription orders. Go to 5hourenergy.com today. So Brian Kelly was talking about Harold Perkins and talked about the, the, the depth there at linebacker and who might be next. But there's another point of the Harold Perkins conversation, which is what you lose with Harold Perkins. And I know that there's a lot of LSU fans, and I've heard some of your sarcastic comments, which are dreadful, but are looking at the productivity for Harold Perkins. 
and maybe thinking that you're not going to miss him much. But I want to remind you of something that former LSU defensive coordinator Dave Aranda said before the 2017 season. I'll never forget this. It was July of 2017. And we were talking to Dave Aranda. Um, I believe he just got a contract extension, maybe. And he was asked about Arden Key. And the comment he made about Arden Key is how they can simplify because Arden Key, the way he put it, changes the math. And I love that. And it's been, what's that been now? Seven, eight years. And I've never forgotten it because it was such a simple way of saying something so brilliant. Dave Aranda was like that. And it made a lot of sense. Look, as a sophomore, Arden Key had 12 sacks, 15 TFLs, three passes defense three forced fumbles, a fumble recovery. He was awesome. He was everywhere. He was an All-American, set the LSU single season sack record. A year later, now a little bit heavier and coming off the, the shoulder surgery, only played in eight games, but had just four sacks and six TFLs. His, his numbers were effectively cut in a third. But as Dave Aranda said, it didn't matter because Arden Key changed the math. Just with Arden Key being on the field, Offenses had to account for him. They had to commit multiple people to that side, maybe a tight end to help block him, a, a, a running back to stay in to chip or to provide help for the left tackle or the right tackle in that instance. It was just, uh, he changed the map. And Brian Kelly effectively said the same thing when he was asked about what you lose with Harold Perkins' injury. You know, you got to pay attention to him, right? So from an offensive standpoint, you got to know where he is. So you're game playing against a guy that can wreck your day. So you lose that piece right away. But, um, you know, I, I think, you know, our players clearly understand in this game um, that – that you're going to get injuries. And so we're not going to lose, you know, our identity or, or fall apart because of it. Um, but you feel bad for the individual more than anything else. Um, but I think from the other side, I think people would see it as well. They lost uh, a huge piece of their defense, and he is a great player. But there's 10 other players that make that thing happen. And, and I think it really helps now that our guys understand all 11 have to work harder and and have to work together um to be the kind of defense we want to be so the very beginning of that cut where he said you know an, an offense has to account for him. you have to know where he is that's what he's talking about with changing the math and when you take harold perkins away now all of a sudden an offense doesn't have to come to the line and immediately identify where seven is because you never know where he is coming from and harold perkins was a a rare talent that not only could play on the inside, he could pass rush from the edge, he could drop a coverage and be very effective there. So you do lose that versatile piece on the defense that could keep an offense guessing. So that is a disadvantage, even if it's not just the 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 evidence on the stat sheet and the box score, you're losing a someone who tilts the field in his direction when he's on the field. Now, the only other thing as of now that people are asking about, obviously, is the draft and what it means for Harold Perkins. And Brian Kelly shot down those questions pretty early. Oh, I don't think any of those decisions are made way too soon for, for him to or his family um, to have made any kind of declaration whether this is his last game or not. I think they're just trying to get a hold of the, the surgery and – the rehab associated with it, he'll take all that into consideration. Um, and, and then when it's time to make a decision, he'll make a decision. Certainly he has uh, plenty of time before he has to make that decision. Um, as we talked about, and, and I don't mean for this, a lot of this to be somewhat repetitive. It's just that Brian Kelly's now talking about it on the record. And I understand for all of you who are everydayers that you're listening to this show every single day, uh, some of this is is content we talked about a day ago, but now we're sort of advancing the story because we have Brian Kelly's on the record comments about it. So in many ways, it's kind of like a, like a sequel. So if you're just catching this show for the first time, you didn't catch the previous episode, it's like a sequel that can exist as a standalone. Like this show on its own, you, you could not have heard the previous one and still understand it. But maybe uh, if you go listen to the previous episode, you'll get a little more context and color on my thoughts on the whole thing, and then adding Brian Kelly to it here might uh, help add a little more perspective. Um, one of the things also 
that we talked about uh, it was after Sunday evening, the pro football focus grades came out and the lowest graded position group was the safety group. Let me jog your memory for those who maybe didn't catch this. And this is very indicative of how LSU's defense is playing right now. You know, coming into this season, we all looked at the interior defensive line, not you and me, but Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly, after the spring game, point blank said, there's one position they're going after in the portal, and it was defensive tackle because they felt like they, they had a giant need there. They did. But um, I think we look at some of those long runs and immediately look at the def- interior of the defensive line and think that that's the problem. When in actuality, the problem appears to be in your secondary. Like, Let me point this out for you. If you go look at the pro football focus grades for the UCLA game, okay, this is there were 25 players that played defensive snaps against UCLA. I'm going to start with the highest rated player. And I just understand there, there's a theme here. You're going to get it. The highest rated player was JVR Suggs, defensive tackle. He only played eight snaps, but in his eight snaps, he had four pressures. He had a sack, quarterback hit, two hurries. He was really good, really effective in his eight snaps. Suggs, Braden Swenson, Savion Jones, Jordan Allen, who only played seven snaps, then Zy Alexander, who played 19 before his concussion. Gio Paez, Dominic McKinley, Paris Shan. (laughs) You get the drift there? The top eight players defensively, six of the eight were defensive linemen, and two were defensive backs that only played seven and 19 snaps, respectively. The point is, the best players on your defense are your defensive linemen right now, as weird as that may seem. Now, let's go to the bottom. The lowest rated player defensively was P.J. Woodland. He only played two snaps defensively. Next lowest was Jair Brown, J.K. Johnson, Jordan Gilbert, Major Burns. Stop me if you notice a trend. Deshaun Spears. Then it was Whit Weeks, Harold Perkins, Gabriel Relaford, Kylan Jackson, Sage Ryan. Now you're to the middle of the pack. But your six lowest rated players defensively, your six lowest rated players defensively, for all defensive backs. Your problem isn't your defensive front. Your problem is the back end of your defense that is struggling to cover and that is struggling to tackle and run defense. Now, I'll give Jordan Gilbert a break. He had a tackling grade of 22.3, but the guy dislocated his shoulder. <laughs> he came back in and got a pick. I'll give him a little bit of a, of a break on that. But that's kind of evidence of some of the problem that you're having. Jordan Gilbert got a 46.8 in run defense. You know, Deshaun Spears had a tackling grade of 42.4. And Whit Weeks' tackling grade was only 39.2, incidentally. But the point is, your secondary right now, in particular, your safeties, are the weak link on your defense. So I asked Brian Kelly, knowing that we went over these PFF grades and saw that about LSU safeties, I asked Brian Kelly on Monday, and I did not ask him a leading question. I noted that LSU against UCLA played six safeties. That's a lot. They played six safeties against UCLA. So I asked Brian Kelly, hey, it looked like you played a lot of safeties. After you watched the film, what did you think of how they played? I left it very wide open for him to take it wherever he went. That's how I asked the question. You played a lot of guys. After you watched the film, what did you think of how they played? Listen to his answer. What we're looking for at the safety position more than anything else is, you know, look, we're not putting them on an island as much as what we want is real good leverage on the football, sure tackling, right, and great communication. If I could break it down to just those three things, if, if you give me those three things, then we'll begin to add to the menu, in terms of doing other things. Then we'll put you on the slot a little bit more. Then we'll bring you down and and blitz you a little bit more off the edge. But we need those three things. So we kind of peeled it back a little bit 
and, and wanted to look at more safeties to get those three things down. The fundamentals of playing really good safety require those three things. We saw a little bit more of that this weekend. We need to see a little bit more as we get ready to move into SEC play. Do you know what he's saying? He is confirming the thing I have told you here for months. They have simplified that position bare bones. They are playing too high safety. They are not playing a safety in the box. They're not letting their safeties blitz. They are not doing anything extra with their safeties. Why? To prevent the egregious coverage busts that were so prevalent a season ago. And the real concerning thing is I'm sitting there mentioning veteran players to you. Guys that have played a lot of football, some of them. Major Burns, Sage Ryan, Jordan Gilbert, veteran players, Jordan Allen, who's in his third year. And even with those veteran players, this coaching staff is scaling back bare bones and saying we want leverage, tackling, and communication. Do those three things. So what did they do against UCLA? They rolled six safeties out there to see who could play with leverage, who could tackle, and who could communicate. You know what they're going to do against South Alabama this, th this week? The same thing. They're going to roll out six safeties again and see who's going to play the best. And ultimately, whoever plays with leverage, tackles, and communicates are going to be the ones that play against Ole Miss and at Arkansas and at Texas A&M and against Alabama and, again, and at Florida and against Vanderbilt and against Oklahoma. Y'all, the gauntlet is coming. Like, you have run out of time. You have one more game. You have run out of time to figure things out. You got one more game to figure things out. And then you got to be ready to go or this thing goes off the rails in a hurry in October. Brian Kelly's telling you point blank, we have gone bare bones. We have scaled everything back. We need basics of the safety position. Whoever can give us that's going to play. You're going to start to see who that is this weekend against South Alabama. That's going to be your answer because it's your last opportunity to get these guys experience. All right, it's Locked on LSU. We're glad to have you aboard with us here. Uh, Jaden versus Joe for the first time on Monday Night Football. Give you some thoughts. Stay here. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Man, speaking of Jaden versus Joe, uh, what a game that was. Hey, you could have bet on it over at FanDuel. Hey, if you're an NFL fan, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So, Get a hunch in the middle of the game. You can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. You want to bet on uh, LSU uh, this weekend at home against South Alabama? Tigers are a three-touchdown favorite. Or you want to take advantage of this great NFL bet? You can do that as well. Saints are on the road against Atlantic. Can the Saints get back on track? Fingers crossed. Let's hope. But at FanDuel right now, you can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. FanDuel.com. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. It was Jaden versus Joe on Monday Night Football for the first time. The first time we saw Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks from the same school square off against each other. Not the first time we've seen quarterbacks from the same school square off against each other, but the first time we've seen Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks uh, from LSU square off against each other in what was an historic night for both Jaden Daniels, Joe Burrow, and my goodness, did Joe Burrow and the Bengals need a win in the worst way at home 0-2. But JD5 got the best of him, and what an incredible, incredibly efficient performance it was for Jaden Daniels. Burrow was sensational as well. If I just read you Joe Burrow's stat line, you would think absolutely the Cincinnati Bengals roasted uh, the Washington Commanders at home. Burrow was 29 of 38 for 324. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. He protected the football. He threw for over 300 yards, had a rating of 127.5. But Joey B was outdone by the Rook. Jaden Daniels went into Cincinnati 21 of 23. 21 of 23. 254, two touchdowns, no interceptions, had a rating of 141.7. Jaden also ran it 12 times for 39 yards and a touchdown. Had his first two career passing touchdowns. As a matter of fact, 
They got a fat guy touchdown on the board, which is pretty funny to see. Trent Scott caught the first touchdown pass of Jaden Daniels' career, a one-yarder from the goal line with the, uh, the, the tackle eligible. So that'll be a trivia question. Number 73, Trent Scott was the first player to catch a touchdown from Jaden Daniels. Jamar Chase had a great day as well, six catches for 118. He had two touchdowns on the day, including a 41-yarder to get the, store, uh, the scoring started. Joe Burrow and Jaden Daniels were both awesome. It really sucks that somebody had to lose. And I'm going to tell you this. I don't know how parents watch their children play against each other. Like, Jaden and Joe aren't even my children. They just went to school at the place I did and played football at the school that, that my alma mater that I cheer for. And it was agonizing watching them because it felt like if you were cheering for one, you were cheering against the other. I don't know how Mama Kelsey in the Super Bowl watched Travis and Jason Kelsey go against each other. I don't know how Archie and Olivia Manning watched Eli and Peyton go against each other all those years. I don't know how, and that's just a couple of NFL parents. It doesn't matter if your kids play in college, if your kids play high school against each other, whatever it may be, it, whatever sport it may be. That... Would ha that has to be absolute misery uh, for parents. You, in one hand, you're so proud. But on the other hand, it is miserable going through that because every good thing that you feel for one child, you feel agony for the other. And that's kind of what it felt like watching this game. But the dagger from Jaden Daniels, if you weren't watching the game, uh, Jaden Daniels, the, the, uh, it was a, a five-point game. The commanders were driving. You thought maybe they're going to sit there, settle for a field goal, get it to eight. But Jaden Daniels, my goodness, a 27-yard touchdown pass on a third down with 2.10 remaining in the ball game. A 27-yard touchdown pass where he dropped it in a bucket to Terry McLaurin. Ended up putting it up about 38-26. Uh, the Bengals would go down and score. Uh, they would not get the onside kick. So 38-33 was the final. Heck of a day for Jaden and Joe uh, as they both did LSU very proud. But uh, only one winner. And it was JD5 getting the win in the first of many matchups between the Bengals and uh, the Commanders with Jaden and Joe at the helm. Okay, y'all, that's going to do it for us here. Thanks for making this your first listen every day. Um, now, for your second listen, I'm about to go check out Locked On College Football. Locked On College Football podcast is linked in the description of this episode. So check it out wherever you get great podcasts. Hey, thanks so much for being here. If you're on podcast, uh, please subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Rate us, leave a review. If you're on YouTube, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you're notified whenever we post a new video, and let a friend know if they love the Tigers. We got you here every single day for Locked on LSU, your team every day.